Henrik that happened right here. Because, uh, we basically concluded uh, uh, our assignment. I said, but still, he needs help. I Who was Connor sent this on phone? Connor was the 14 year old murder victim who almost escaped serial killer Jeffrey Dahmer. Now, Connor and his family had moved to Milwaukee in 1979 in hopes of a better life. On May 27, 1991, a 14 year old Connor escaped Jeffrey Dahmer, got outside only to be returned to the apartment. It's tragic. Now today, I'm going to bring you to where that apartment building stood and where he escaped from. I'm going to play testimony from two of the officers who arrived that night only to return to the apartment with Connerick and Dahmer. I'm going to show you an interview with Dahmer, an eyewitness account, and we are going to go to the final resting place of Connerick and pay our respects to this young boy. Come with me today. Alrighty, so it was the killing of Connerick that happened right here. Now, on the afternoon of May 26th, 1991, Dahmer encountered a 14-year-old teenager named Connerick on Wisconsin Avenue. Now, on this occasion, Dahmer drilled a single hole into the crown of his skull. And though he injected acid, Dahmer then drank several beers while lying beside Connerick before falling asleep. Now, he left to go drink at a bar. And this is where it gets so sad. Now, Connor had gotten outside of the apartment. He was, uh, he was on the couch, lying down with, with drilling technique and already been a fight. And, uh, I... Did you arrive at a conclusion as to whether or not you had taken his life as a consequence of the drilling technique? Side with some people who were trying to help him. And they could see that something was wrong, clearly. Now, when Dahmer returned home, he approached the women and he told them that Connor was his friend and attempted to lead him to his apartment by the arm. The three women dissuaded Dahmer, explaining they had phoned 911. Now, upon the arrival of two Milwaukee police officers, Dahmer's demeanor relaxed. He told the officers that Connor was his 19-year-old boyfriend, he had drank too much, and that he frequently behaved in this manner when intoxicated. Now, the three women were exasperated, and when one of the trio attempted to indicate to the officers, both of the officers observed no injuries beyond a scrape to his knee, and they allowed Dahmer to take Connor back to his apartment. Officer Belzerzak and Officer Gibrish both arrived that night and dealt with Dahmer and Connor and returned to the apartment with them. I want you to hear some of their testimony. What's your name and spell your last name. Officer John Belzerzak, B-A-L-C-E-R-Z-A-K. How were you employed in the morning hours of May 27, 1991? As a police officer of City of Milwaukee. How long had you been a police officer? Approximately six and a half years. Were you assigned to a particular district station? 
I was assigned to uh, Third District, City of Milwaukee. As I recall, the uh, dispatch was uh, to check for a naked man, badly beaten, 25th and State Street, anonymous caller. I observed uh, uh, two individuals uh, in the alley itself, at which point we turned into that alley. The two individuals, one uh, individual was uh, uh, naked, and uh, the uh, second individual appeared to be assisting him to his, to his feet and uh, beginning to walk as we were pulling into the alley. It appeared to you that he was helping up the naked man off, off, his, off the ground? Uh, it appeared that he was helping him to his feet, uh, just, and had just concluded helping him to his feet uh, and began to walk. As we approached uh, um, both uh, individuals, we uh, uh, separated both individuals as is a standard procedure to uh, determine what uh, is uh, happening. Did the clothed or the unclothed man, did you undertake to question? Uh, during our investigation, I uh, questioned the clothed male. Uh, did you ask him what his name was? Yes. The man to whom you were talking, what name did he give you? He gave me Jeffrey Dahmer. What, if anything, did he say about the incident when you queried him or what, what's happening here? Uh, he related, related to myself that uh, uh, he was assisting his uh, roommate from the past few weeks uh, uh, back to the, uh, their apartment. He stated that uh, uh, his roommate uh, uh, had been drinking and had uh, passed out on the couch of the apartment and that uh, that's where he had left him when he had gone uh, to a local tavern uh, to obtain some beer or cigarettes. So Dahmer told you that this was his roommate, this naked man, that he had left his roommate earlier. The roommate had passed out in their apartment to, and he, Dahmer, had left the apartment with the man passed out and had gone to a tavern. That's correct. What else, did you get, were you successful at all in getting any information from the Asian male? No, I did not get anything from him. Did he simply remain silent, or did he speak in some tongue you didn't understand, or what, if any, communication was there? There was uh, nothing from him uh, verbally, phys physically, uh, facial, facial expressions, nothing other than just his being aware that I was there and talking to him, asking him questions. He just didn't respond. What did you then do or say after you had made these observations and this attempt to communicate with the Asian male? At uh, that time, I think, uh, as I recall, I, I uh, spoke with Mr. Dahmer uh, again, and uh, may have spoke with my partner another time. As you did, did, was there some walk down a hallway or partway down a hallway to get to Mr. Dahmer's apartment? Yes, it was a little, little bit into the building itself. Right. Were you in that hallway by the time he undertook to unlock the door into his apartment? I would have been in the hallway, yes. Right. And did he unlock the door? Again, I was not in a position that, to observe how he was entering his apartment. At any rate, because the, the Perubkin, Gabrish, the Oriental male, and Dahmer were between you and the Dahmer, Dahmer's door, is that correct? I believe that's how So it was. they obstructed your view of what happened. But at any rate, he opened the apartment door, Mr. Dahmer did, and the group went in, is that correct? That's correct. Uh, was there any hesitancy by him about going into the apartment? No, there was no hesitance. Uh, uh, by him either on the street of before when we uh, stated we're going about uh, going back to the apartment and uh, there was no hesitation at any time uh, about uh, op allowing us into the apartment of any and sort. He so. didn't ask for a warrant or anything like that? No. All right, he opened the door and all of you went in. Were you probably the last to go in? Uh, I would believe so, yes. When you got in, uh, can you tell the jury basically when you open up, is it a living room opening up into the uh, the first door, first uh, room you enter from the hallway? It's a apartment build, apartment itself. It uh, has a short hallway, and uh, there would be a living room uh, and an open area to the kitchen. All right. Is there was there if you did you notice any doorway to the right leading into a bedroom or bathroom? Uh, it may have been a short. Uh, Again, a, a short hallway where there was a, uh, a door or two, which uh, I assumed was the, the bathroom or bedroom. Right. Did you go into that area at all? No. Do you have any recollection whether that was closed when you, got, when you walked into the, that area that would provide access to the bedroom and bathroom? 
Do you recall if that, the access to that hallway, there was a closed door there or not, if you recollect? Uh, to the hallway or to the rooms it, itself? No, to the hallway that would lead into the bathroom and the bedroom. I believe that the, there was no, no door to the hallway itself, my recollection, uh, but just to the individual rooms it, them, themselves. Did you look into a bedroom or a bathroom at all? No, the, those doors, uh, as I recall, were closed and had no reason to venture to, into there. But when you came in to the living room, what observations did you make? The apartment, uh, of the apartment itself? Or yes. The apartment uh, was a neat, uh, well-kept apartment. Uh, did you make any particular observations with respect to the, was there a couch in the living room? Yes, there was. Did you make any particular observations of that couch? The uh, couch uh, in regards to where it was positioned or what was on it? Where it was positioned, what was on it, whatever you observed of it. Uh, the couch, uh, I believe, was against the east wall of the apartment. Uh, had uh, a blanket or, or a sheet, as I recall, on the, cl uh, on the couch uh, and uh, uh, some clothing as, it, as if someone had been sleeping on the couch and with the blanket. All right, what impact did that have on you, that observation? Uh, that, to me, uh, further substantiated uh, uh, what I had been told uh, uh, on the street uh, during my investigation on the street, and as we further investigated, that, that substantiated uh, uh, that uh, from Mr. Dahmer that uh, someone, that his roommate had been uh, sleeping on the couch, and passed then, out. And the clothes were there on the couch also? Yes. What if any observation did you make in your, you described it as a neat apartment. Did you see any evidence of a struggle in that apartment? No, there was uh, uh, no signs of any uh, uh, disturbance or struggle of any sort. Everything was in its place and uh, it was uh, a clean, uh, well-kept apartment. What, uh, what if anything was said or done at that time? There are now the three officers, you, Gabrish, Perubkin, the defendant, Mr. Dahmer, and uh, the Asian, the Ar Oriental male, is that correct? That's correct. And uh, what did the Oriental male do when you came into the apartment? What was uh, he doing or had he done by the time you came into the apartment? As uh, I was walking to the apartment, uh, uh, he proceeded to the couch and uh, he sat in an upright position on the, on the edge of the couch. Uh, since that time, since the May 27, 1991 morning, you have come to know that Asian male by a name other than John Hamong, is that correct? That's correct. And by what name have you come to know him? As uh, Conrad uh, Simpha Sinfone. You've seen pictures of him and so on, and, and that was the male, the oriental male that you were observing at that early morning hours you've come to know as Conrad Simpha Sinfone, is that correct? Uh, that's correct. Right. As you're making these observations, you see the, the sheet on the bed or on the couch, the sheet or blanket, the clothes. What other observations did you make at that time or what was said or done at that time in the apartment? At that time, uh, I was uh, uh, talking to uh, Mr. Dahmer and uh, my partner was uh, next to me uh, in an area not too not too distant from me. Officer Prupkin was uh, off to the side uh, towards some t uh, a table toward the kitchen area. Uh, and do you recall what you said to Dahmer at this particular time, what the discussion was about? Were you looking for anything at that point? Uh, at, the, at that point, we had proceeded back to further uh, investigate and to uh, further su just to substantiate everything and, and uh, uh, do you recall observing, or do you recall or not, whether any of the other officers started through the clothing that you saw uh, that was seen on the couch? I don't recall myself uh, uh, that uh, incident uh, or that, that part of, of the, our investigation. Uh, you, in other words, you don't know what particularly what Gabrish or Probkin was doing at that point. Other, you were more or less talking to Dahmer. They were nearby because it's a small apartment, but you weren't particularly observing what they were doing, I take it, at that point. I wasn't watching them directly, no. What then happened or was said or done? By... By anybody? Um, Officer uh, Prupkin uh, uh, picked up uh, a one or two Polaroid pictures off of a table. 
and uh, he held them up uh, to our view uh, so we could view them and uh, brought them to our attention. Were you close enough, proximate enough, that you could uh, make a review yourself of those Polaroid pictures? Yes. And what appeared in those Polaroid pictures? Uh, it was a uh, picture uh, of uh, Siphon uh, posing in a either black uh, underwear or uh, bikini briefs uh, in that apartment itself. I ask you to examine what has been marked as State's Exhibit number 68 and 69. Uh, can you tell the jury, are those photographs? Yes. And are they photographs of a man you've come to know, a male you've come to know as Connor X and phone? Yes. And uh, would you describe to the jury what is presented in those photos? It's a picture of uh, uh, it appeared to be the, the same Polaroid, uh, uh, which I viewed the, upon that early morning hours. And what do they? What does the picture show? Uh, it shows uh, 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 Mr. Simphone uh, uh, posing in black uh, bikini briefs or uh, underwear uh, in a relaxed pose uh, in the apartment itself. Is he in one of the poses? Is he on the couch? Uh, yes, one of the poses, he's uh, uh, stretched out on the couch. Do, are his eyes open? Yes, they are. Does he appear to be conscious in that pose? Yes. Does it appear to be a deliberate posing? Yes, it appears to be a relaxed uh, uh, pose for whoever was taking the pictures. And what does the second picture contain? Uh, again, it contains the, the same uh, uh, setting, that of the, the apartment. Uh, yeah, along with uh, Mr. Zinfone uh, with his uh, bikini briefs uh, posing. Is he standing or reclining in the second photo? He is uh, standing. And do, are his eyes open? Yes, they are. Does he appear to be conscious? Yes. Right. You were shown those photos by Perubkin or, or copies of those photos by Perubkin at that time in the apartment? It would be, uh, uh, I believe they were Polaroid pictures, uh, yes. Right. What was said or done at that time? Uh, upon... Uh, yes, after you observed those, Perubkin showed them to you. Did he show them to Gabrish too, if you recollect? Uh, Officer Gabrish, myself, uh, along with uh, Mr. Dahmer and Mr. Simpson-Siphon were all in a position to view those, yes. And what happened then? Or was said or done at that point, after you looked at those photos? Uh, said or done by us or by... Yes, by anybody in the um, room there. I believe uh, Mr. Dahmer made a statement uh, that uh, it seemed, to me he appeared to be a little embarrassed uh, about it and made a uh, statement or said something to the effect that everybody has to be into some, something. Everybody has to be into something? And right. you drew some conclusions from that? Uh, from the pictures and the statement or from the yes. statement? Uh, to me, it appeared, uh, uh, yes. All right, and what were those conclusions? That there was a relationship uh, 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 of sorts between the two individuals. Uh, uh, Is there anything in the pictures that suggested to you that it either was consensual or non-consensual from looking at the pictures? From the pictures, it appeared to be a, a consensual type of pose, a relaxed posing. And and you could no tell distress the, of any sorts uh, in the pictures. Right. I'm sorry. Would you read the rest of the answer? Uh, I'm just going. Um, it appeared to be a consensual type of pose, relaxed pose, no distress of any sort. Did not appear to, and you could tell from looking at the picture, the pictures that had been taken in the very apartment in which you were standing. Yes. Right. What, what did that influence? What then transpired? Your decision. Having seen those two pictures, it just uh, to to, uh, to me it just further substantiated uh, our invest my investigation that of my partners that uh, uh, everything was substantial appeared to substantiate what uh, uh, Mr. Dahmer had uh, related to us throughout the investigation. What if any after those pictures were shown by Perubkin? What if and Mr. Dahmer said everybody's got to be into something? 
What did you then do or say? Uh, at that time, uh, uh, I believe I uh, uh, spoke to Mr. Dahmer stating that uh, if uh, we or the police returned uh, for similar behavior, then uh, uh, some action would, have, would be taken. And this is referring to if, if some phone lines is seen out on the street naked again, further action will be taken? Uh, yes. What, and after, did he respond to that at all, Dahmer? Uh, I believe he said something to the effect that he, uh, he assured us that uh, he'd take care of them and uh, that they wouldn't occur again. What, if anything, then was said or done? Uh, at that point, uh, we basically concluded uh, uh, our assignment and uh, uh, Here is the second officer, Joseph Gavers. Please be seated, sir. Can you state your name and spell your last name, please? Joseph Gavers, G-A-B-R-I-S-H. In the early morning hours of May 27, 1991, you were a City of Milwaukee police officer, is that correct? That's correct. You were on duty and your partner has already testified he was John Balserzak, is that correct? Yes, it is. You and he were riding in the same squad, Squad 36? Correct. I'm, not, I'm going to short circuit right to the point. There came a time at or about 2 a.m. that you were dispatched with a report of a naked male in the vicinity of North 25th and West State Streets, is that correct? The dispatch, as I recall, it was a naked man down near 25th and State Street. And you and he went in that squad to that location, is that correct? Correct. As you pulled up there, you saw a group of people standing at the mouth of an east-west alley that opened off North 25th Street, is that correct? That's correct. You pulled into that alley with your squad lights on? The headlights of the squad car were on, yes. And you got out of the car? That's correct. What did you do after you got out of the car? What did you see and what did you do? I exited the car. I was the passenger of the car. There was a group of people in the alley and they were all pointing to a white male and a second Asian male who was naked uh, just east of our location in the alley. Um, did you get out, when you got out of the car, did you approach anyone in particular? I walked towards uh, the two individuals that were east of us in the alley immediately after exiting the squad car. Will the, were the two individuals next to each other or in close proximity to each other? Yes, they appeared to be walking together. And what did you do then? Um, we separated the two individuals so that we could question them as to what was going on. And uh, your partner, Bolserzak, took Mr. Dahmer and you took the Asian male? Uh, I talked to the Asian male, correct, and my partner talked to who, who we later found out to be Mr. Dahmer. And would you tell the jury what, if anything, you said to the Asian male, and what, if anything, he responded to you? I asked him uh, several times what his name was, uh, his date of birth, trying to get informational questions about the goings on from him, and he did not give any type of communicable response to me. Was he making any noise at all? Did you get any response at all from him? He was basically mumbling, but it was nothing that could be understood. Okay. Were you close to him at this time? Yes, I was. Were, were you in front of the headlights on the squad? Yes. What observations, physical observations, did you make of him at that time? That he was uh, an Asian male, that he appeared to be approximately 19 to 20 years old. Um, that uh, regarding any injury, the only thing that I noticed that he had a scuffed knee. He appeared to be in somewhat of an intoxicated state. Do you recall if you smelled any alcohol on his person? Yes, I did. And uh, in terms of the intoxication, can you tell us how his eyes were? Can you describe his eyes in any way? His eyes just appear to be glassy. Have you seen persons in such condition before? Yes, I have. And did you undertake, or at least as you spoke, continued to speak with him, did you form an opinion as to what his situation was? He appeared to me to be intoxicated. Do you know whether the intoxication was from alcohol and or some other drug, if you know? I do not know for sure. 
uh, my partner came up to me and told me that he had obtained information from the white male to whom he was talking to. And basically that the Asian male's name was John Hamong and that he was uh, 20 years old and that he had been staying with him for the last, I believe he said, two to three weeks. Had been staying with whom? With Mr. Dahmer. He also had obtained Dahmer's name at that point. And did he mention that what, what the, uh, the white male's name was? Uh, yes, uh, Jeffrey L. Dahmer. I believe he also had a date of birth, but I don't recall what that is. And what, did you, what if anything, did you and uh, your partner decide to do? At that point, um, my partner asked the Asian male some of the similar questions that I had been asking him in an attempt to get a response from him. Um, there still was no response. He, he did not respond to Balzerzak either. Right. right. Um, my partner, Officer Balzerzak, then uh, asked the crowd if anyone there knew the Asian male or, or knew what was going on, and no one responded to him at that point. Had you had any communication from persons in the group while you were attempting to talk to uh, the Asian male? I had uh, communication briefly when I got there. Someone suggested that uh, the Asian male and the white male may have been in a fight. Uh, later on, I believe that same person came up to me and said she had further information. I requested that she stood back momentarily until we could stabilize the situation and get it under control and that I would be with her as soon as I could get to her. Uh, after Officer Balzerzak attempted without success to get any information from the Asian male, what, if anything, did you or he do? At that point, Officer Balzerzak um, went back and talked to Mr. Dahmer again for a short period of time. And shortly after that, he came back to me. We decided to continue our investigation by way of going back up to the apartment as my partner had found out that uh, the Asian male had been there previously and that's where his clothing was. Uh, as you went down the hall, the, then you came to Dahmer's apartment? That's correct. And what did he do when he got there? He was still talking about security systems and he unlocked the door and let us in. And uh, did you follow into the apartment building, into yeah. the apartment? Yes, we did. That would mean eventually the, the, yourself, Officer, Officer Perubkin, the, your partner, Officer Balzerzak, Mr. Dahmer, and the Asian male. Is that correct? That is correct. You've come to know the name of that Asian male, have you not? Yes, I have. And this is subsequent to the May 27, 1991, you, come, you came to know his name. Is that so? That's correct. And what is his name? Cataract Simplice Phone. When you entered the apartment, what did you observe? Basically that it was a well-kept apartment, um, it was neat, um, just a normal apartment. <coughs> the next thing that happened was that Officer Perupkin, uh, he had walked the farthest into the apartment, he had found a picture on a coffee table or a table that was in the apartment, and it was of the same Asian male, Conrad. And what did he do with that picture? He held it up uh, to Officer Belzerzek and myself, who were standing near to Mr. Dahmer. And we asked Mr. Dahmer what it was. And he's, he's, his response was that everyone is into something, or everybody has got to be into something. Did you see one or two pictures, if you recollect? I just recall that he held up one picture. I'm going to show you State's Exhibit 69 and State's Exhibit 68. Can you recollect, first of all, do you recognize either of those pictures? I can recognize exhibit number 69 as the one I saw that day. This is not the exact photograph that I saw. It was a Polaroid photograph that I saw that day. Does that appear to be a copy of what you saw? Yes. Right. And what is depicted in that exhibit that you say you recognize? It's the Asian male in the same apartment posing in a black pair of swimming suits. And is he laying somewhere or is he standing in that exhibit? He is standing up. And what is his clothing? Just the black swimming suit. 
And uh, does he does he appear to be awake or his eyes open? He's awake. He's standing, looking directly at the camera. Did you recognize the person when Perupkin held that up? Did you recognize the person depicted in the picture? I recognized it as the same person that we were there with. And that is the Asian male That's that correct. you've come to know as Connor X Synthesis Phone? That's correct. Did anyone undertake to examine the clothing, uh, to look for anything in the clothing that was seen on the couch? That's correct. While we were in there, I observed that Officer Belzerzak uh, uh, went over to the couch where the clothing was and that he went through the pockets and patted it down. Was any, did, was any identification found for the Asian male? No, there was none found. Do you recollect any discussion at that point about the identification of the Asian male? No, I do not. You were now in a better lit circumstances, I assume, than in the alley. That's correct. There were lights on in the apartment. Right. And did that better lighting afford you a better opportunity to examine the person of Connor accent to some phone? Yes, it did. Did you make observation of any other injuries on his person other than the knee about which you have spoken? No, I did not. What happened after you saw the pictures, the picture, the one picture that you observed? We, well, we, like I said, we asked Mr. Dahmer what it, what it was, and he said that everyone was into something, and we depicted that to mean that they were friends or had some sort of relationship. And then what happened? <clears throat> After that, um, we again attempted to talk to the Asian male, um, and we also talked to Mr. Dahmer. We told him that if the type of activity would continue and the police had to be called again that we would have to take some sort of action. All right. When you say the type of activity continued, what activity were you speaking to? That if the Asian male would run out of the apartment again without clothing in an intoxicated state that we would have to issue a citation or take some other sort of legal action. What happened then after that communication? Mr. Dahmer assured us that this was a friend of his and that he would take care of him, that there would be no further need for the police or any further disturbance whatsoever. Here is an eyewitness account from someone who was there and found... In the morning of May 27th, that's when Tina Spively says she and her friend saw Conrad Sintison phone stumble and fall onto State Street. They ran up to him and noticed that he was bleeding from behind, and he appeared to be drugged at that time as well. That's allegedly when Jeffrey Dahmer grabbed at the boy, and Tina says she confronted him. I was right up on him. I'm trying to threaten him, to, you know, to let him go. We're like, we're going to bust you in your stuff. Turn him loose. He don't want to be with you. Leave him alone. And then my cousin was like, just get out of it. It's none of your business. I said, but still, he needs help. I said, look at him doing like they get him some dope or something. Spivey's friend called police. By the time they arrived, Dahmer had allegedly carried Sinison Bone to this alley just off the of 25th and State. But Spivey says the two officers quickly asked them to leave. Alrighty guys, so we came to Holy Cross Cemetery today because I want to pay my respects um, to one of the Dahmer victims. Now, do you remember me telling you about Conrick, the 14-year-old boy that escaped only to be uh, given back by the police and brought back and killed by Dahmer. He's interred here at Holy Cross in Milwaukee. So I wanted to come here and uh, see if we could find his grave and uh, pay our respects. So let's take a look. Now it's right here. Right there. Conorick, 1976 to 1991. Now, 
Before he was found dismembered in Jeffrey Dahmer's apartment, his older brother was actually victimized by Dahmer. He was only 14 years old at the time of his murder. He fled with his parents and seven siblings to Milwaukee in 1979 in search of better opportunities. It's unbelievable the torture that he went through and he's interred right here. See, on May 27, 1991, Dahmer's neighbor, Glenda Cleveland, her daughter and her niece alerted the authorities of a disoriented, bleeding boy later identified as Conorick, roaming the streets. And as I had mentioned earlier when I showed the apartment, Dahmer had left and went out drinking. Police officers responded and Dahmer arrived shortly after the officers and convinced them that Conorick was his drunk lover, even though he was only 14. Now, despite the vigorous protest, protests of many on the scene, the officers and Dahmer led Conorick back to Dahmer's apartment where the body of one of Dahmer's victims lay unnoticed in an adjoining room. Now, they concluded that Dahmer and Conorick were adult lovers and they left. 30 minutes later, he became Dahmer's 13th victim. Crazy. To think of how history could have been changed for Conorick if only other actions would have been taken. Alrighty guys, that was the final resting place of Conorick. Dahmer's 13th victim and um, the young boy who escaped Dahmer only to be given back to him and um, and then he's no, no chance but I wanted to show you this I wanted to come and pay our respects to one of Dahmer's victims there's two victims in this cemetery but I wanted to come and pay our respects um, to Dahmer's victims because really that's who should be remembered not the person who committed the monstrous acts but the victims i appreciate you watching thank you for joining me